In this video, we'll show you how to upgrade your shower hardware from something like this to something like this. Coming up. We're in the process of redoing our bathroom, and one of the things that stands out to us as something that needs to be addressed is all of the hardware in this one bathroom in our house uh, has a chrome finish, and all the other bathrooms and everything else in the house has an antique bronze. So in order to correct that, what we're going to do is we're going to replace uh, the shower head, the faucet, tub spout, everything with uh, this new kit for mowing. So what we'll do is we'll take you through the process of uninstalling everything that's there currently and then installing uh, the, new com the new pieces basically for the shower and uh, show you what that process looks like. So first what we're going to do is we're going to unbox this new unit for mowing. Now this isn't everything that we need to uh, take all the chrome out of the shower, but these are the main pieces. So in this kit, it's basically like an entire shower tub uh, valve system from mowing, uh, but we really only need this for the pieces that are included here, the things that are visible. It includes a new valve like it would if you were installing this from scratch. We don't need that piece. Um, but the reason why we went with mowing in this case is because the one that is already there in the shower is a unit for mowing. So we're hoping that we can just take off these visible pieces and replace everything. Really this thing here is the, the key component uh, to make sure everything's compatible. But if not, then we'd have to replace this valve. So hopefully we don't have to do that. You got this where the shower arm goes into the wall. Some screws. The escutcheon plate. I think is how you pronounce that. If that's not right, please leave me a comment below and type out how you pronounce it. We've got hardware. We got the uh, tub filler and spout. The shower arm itself. Is it called a handle? We have the handle. We have the valve that hopefully we don't need for this because if we do, it's going to be a lot bigger project. And we have the shower head. So we can take a look at see what this looks like real quick. Very fancy. First thing we want to do is take off this plate since we're just basically replacing everything that's visible and we don't really need to replace the valve. And if we did replace the valve, it'd be a lot more work. Um, all we have to do, first thing we need to do is take off this handle and this plate and make sure the handle and the plate on the new kit will fit in its place. Take off the handle. There's usually a set screw underneath the handle that you can access and unscrew the uh, screws so the handle comes off. So you can see the screw that was in here, it's just a hex screw uh, that was screwed up into this uh, to keep this handle on. So basically it went through here, it goes up, and it attaches it to this. So that's all that is. So we've got that removed. Now we take off the plate itself couple screws. So now we just have to remove a couple screws from this plate and basically what we're going to do is we're going to check and make sure these screw holes line up with the new um, valve system that we purchased and make sure that all this lines up and the handle fits on this and all that. So now this might be attached with silicone and it might not be and this one's not. So this was just got this foam gasket here to prevent the water from going back in the wall. Okay, so first things first, let's make sure this plate lines up with the holes. And it does. All right, so step number two is make sure the handle fits. Okay, so now this piece goes on here. And this piece goes here. And that fits. And then the handle goes on here. And it looks like that fits. I'm not going to turn on all the way, but I'm going to try and turn on. Yep, it fits. Okay, so we know that this is going to be re a direct replacement, which is fantastic. So now what we have to do is uh, just reverse the process, screw the plate back on. Make sure we take our time here and not scratch up the new surface. Let's make sure this is snug. It doesn't have to be too tight. Put the limiter back on. And let me put this valve back on. And take your time, don't cross thread the screw. <clears throat> let me put this on. 
Okay, part one is complete. The next piece will be to tackle the tub spout. Now, with the one that was currently installed, it's just a slip-on type uh, tub spout. So basically, the only thing holding this on is a set screw underneath. It, it just kind of pushes on to the pipe. You undo the set screw, and then you can pull this off, which, uh, which is normally just fine. But the problem is, in this set that we purchased to update this look to the antique bronze, it's not a push-on type fitting, it's actually a screw type fitting. And I don't know, you might not, probably not be able to see inside this, but you can see at the very end, there are, there's a threaded connection. And so, in order to be able to install this, you're going to have to have threads on the end of the pipe that comes out of the wall to be able to, to attach this. So, since we don't have those threads, we're going to have to correct that. So, the options to fix this, um, we've got a couple of them. One, we could completely remove this pipe and replace it with one that has the threaded end. The problem with that is we can't really get into this wall without tearing up this tub surround. So in our case, this isn't an option because um, that's just gonna create a ton of work and uh, we really don't want to, to go down that road. The other option you can, you can do, and I don't recommend this either, is you can buy what's called a, a shark bite fitting. And so shark bites, basically what they do is on copper pipe and on um, PEX, I think some PVC pipe possibly. But on, on copper pipe, what you can do is you can install this and basically this pushes on and then this would allow you to have threads on the end of this pipe. The, uh, the problem in this case, while it is threaded, um, since this is just a pressure type fitting, yeah, when I, I'm afraid that when I screw the spout on, this is just going to spin. And so if it, this is just spins, um, we're not going to be able to get a tight seal. So we're not going to use this. Um, you might think, well, maybe I can just screw this on inside the spout um, before I put it on the pipe. And <clears throat> while you might be able to do that and then slip everything on, uh, the problem with that then is you're not going to ever be able to remove this because this shark bite is going to spin inside of this spout and then you'll never be able to pull it off. So um, you might be able to do that. Just keep in mind that uh, it's going to be a permanent installation if you have to ever have to do something to fix it or if for whatever reason this leaks, um, you're going to have a hard time getting this back off. So the other option you have is to install a threaded mail adapter. And uh, this option would be basically what would have occurred um, when, the, when your home was being built or, or the original plumbing was being done um, if the tub spout kit needed this type of a connector. So the plumber would go ahead and solder on this fitting and then it would be ready to go. So this is the preferred option, obviously. The, uh, the problem with this is you have to be able to solder the connections together. So if you're not uh, comfortable with that, you might want to have a plumber at this point if this is your, uh, your issue. But I uh, just want to go over the options here for you so you know what to do. So this connector, they make some that fit um, inside the pipe. Uh, this is not one of those. This is one that is the same diameter as the pipe. And so uh, what we've done is because this, um, this pipe is a little bit too short for the spout, is I've gotten one that um, is the same diameter and I'm going to use this. Um, uh, this is a six inch piece of uh, repair coupling. And what I can do is I can cut this to the length that I need um, and I can put this on this pipe and I can put this in this end of the pipe and obviously this is way too long. But uh, just to kind of show you how this works, you put these two pieces together and then you'd solder uh, this end of the repair uh, pipe and then this end as well and then you'd have a solid connection. So we went, we're going with uh, this option and we're going with this pipe because this is just a little bit too short for our spout. Um, but uh, those are the options. Again, I'm not going to show you how to solder because that's a little bit more advanced. So if you're not comfortable with doing that, this would be the point where you need to get a plumber involved. We've got our threaded adapter installed now. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this with some Teflon tape. Just a couple times is all that we need. And now we can screw on our tub spout. Make sure we don't get the threads crossed. Alright, next
Next, we're gonna remove the shower arm and the shower head and replace it with the new ones that we purchased. So uh, the way this is installed, this shower head screws onto the shower arm. And then behind this plate here, you can see this shower arm goes back into the wall and it's screwed into um, a threaded receptacle, for lack of a better term, uh, that's in the wall. So we need to unscrew this to remove it and then screw in the new shower arm. With this one, what we're gonna do is you could try and remove this um, by just leaving all this attached. Um, the problem is this is a little bit sharp so it could cut you. Uh, the other thing is too, if this is tight, then it's going to be a really difficult job. So we've already known, we already know that this is tight, too tight for me to remove this way. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the shower head first, get this plate off of there, and then I'll show you how to remove uh, one of these arms if it's too difficult to remove by hand. So first we need to remove the old shower head. Okay. And then this plate just comes right off. So the next thing to get this arm off, like I said, this is really tight. So what you'll want to do is, if it's too tight to remove and unscrew by hand, you'll need to stick something in this shower arm to get a little bit more leverage. So I'm just going to use this long screwdriver here and kind of use this as some extra leverage to unscrew it. The next thing you can try, and again, this will mark up the finish on the outside of this arm, is some uh, adjustable, uh, like an adjustable wrench. Um, but basically what you'll do is, you'll wanna grab onto the pipe and unscrew it while you're putting pressure this way. Um, you could probably put some, uh, some of these have some rubber covers that can be used to prevent marring of surfaces. You can probably put a rag around this too um, if you want to, to prevent the uh, finish from uh, getting marked up. There we go. Nice and easy. And it's loose. So we just need to unscrew it the rest of the way. And then now we can put in the new pipe. So on the new shower arm, you want to make sure to wrap the threads of Teflon tape. Again, two to three times. Just to make sure this seals well and it's easy to uh, insert in the wall. Alright, now we just put this in here. And what we're looking for is this to be tight. Depending on where this ends up, I might have to go another rotation here that might be a little bit difficult. On that last turn, when you're trying to get this tight and make sure there aren't any leaks uh, that will occur back in the wall, if you can't get this back pointed down, then you've got a couple options. One is you could try the screwdriver trick that I showed you before to get the old shower arm off. Um, and the other thing is you can always use some um, vice grips or some pliers, again, to hold onto this pipe to turn it the rest of the way. If you do that, again, you need to be really careful that you're not messing this new pipe up, uh, especially this outside finish if you decide to use pliers. So you need to use something like a rag or something else that can protect the finish off of this new arm. And I'm not going to be able to see much, but... Now that the shower arm is installed, the only thing we have to do left to get this kit finished is install the shower head. This is really simple. All you have to do is wrap, again, some Teflon tape around the threads on the shower arm and then screw the shower head on. Now, in our case, we're actually not going to use the included shower head. We're gonna go ahead and install a different shower head. This is one that has different uh, water jet settings as well as an extension hose. And the reason why we're doing this is because this is actually our kids' bathroom. So so make cleaning, uh, washing, bathing the kids a lot easier as well as this makes it a lot more convenient to do things like washing the dog. Um, it's just really handy to have. So we're gonna install this in this bathroom instead. Next, you'll need to put this plate on. Once your shower arm's nice and tight, don't forget this step and install the shower head because if you do, you're gonna have to remove the shower head in order to get this back on. So just word of advice. Process is the same. For the most part, if you're installing a handheld shower head, it's tight. Make sure this is straight. Install the hose on the 
shower head and attach the other into the handheld shower head. Now this hose is brand new, which is why it's kind of springy, but over time uh, this, these pieces will soften up and it will hang nice and straight. Just right now, it looks kind of weird. The only thing we have left to do is swap out the uh, overflow plate and the tub drain. So in order to do that, uh, you're gonna have to buy a separate kit. So this is the kit that we purchased here. Uh, it comes with the overflow um, piece, the overflow cover, as well as the drain. A couple things to keep in mind. Uh, you can have different style uh, overflow drain covers. So in this case, ours has one single screw in the middle that holds it on. Uh, some of them have two, so just keep that in mind. Something else to remember is the tub stop could have two different sizes as well. So this kit includes one that has an adapter that can fit the small drain size as well as the big one. So this will work in our case. So we're gonna go ahead and start by installing the overflow cover. Next we'll install the new one. Pretty straightforward, make sure the slit is pointing down. Make sure not to over tighten this, we just want it snug. Now we need to replace the drain assembly. So what we'll do in this style is we just unscrew this knob. Then we need to unscrew this next. that. Okay, now we're left with this part here. And the way that's installed or uninstalled, you have to use a special tool for that, for tub basin. It's called a thing that I don't know. We're going to need a uh, tub drain wrench, also known as a dumbbell wrench. This one is the smaller uh, size, so we're going to use this in. All you have to do is put this in here, and make it line up, and then turn it to remove. Now, if it's too tight, what you can do is you can put a screwdriver in the slot and use that for some leverage. You can also use some pliers or an adjustable wrench to get the leverage you need to. Put one hand, push pressure down, and then turn with the other hand. Okay. And that's out. Now, we just have to reverse the process. But before we do that, you can see there's this all this old plumber's putty here. We need to make sure this is all cleaned up and uh, removed before we install the new tub drain. Now that we have the plumber's putty all removed and this nice and cleaned out and dry, um, basically we need to now uh, prepare the tub stop before we install it. So this kit, like I said, has a bushing uh, for the tubs that need it. If you don't need the bushing, then all you have to do is just unscrew it and then you're ready to install in your tub. So in our case, we need this bushing installed. Um, the other point though is uh, this kit also includes a rubber washer to prevent any kind of leaks uh, underneath the tub drain. But in our case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this and we're just gonna use silicone caulk to have a nice seal between the tub and the drain itself. And so we need to remove the bushing to remove the gasket and then put the bushing back on in order to uh, install this. Okay, so now we take our silicone caulk and we put a nice bead uh, around this piece here. And we're gonna, we're gonna use a lot of silicone caulk because uh, we wanna make sure again that this is nice and sealed. Uh, silicone is gonna squish out once we tighten this down. That's okay. Uh, we need it to squish out uh, and that way we can confirm that it's sealed and it's not gonna leak. Before we do that, we need to remove this piece so we can install it with our wrench. So we'll just get this started here. Make sure we're not cross-threading this in the tub. So we just wanna feel it to make sure it's lined up first. You can see as we tighten it down, you start to see the silicone ooze out, which is 
is exactly what we want. We want to see it around the entire rim coming out. Tighten it a little bit. We don't want to overdo it with the wrench, but we want to, want to make sure this is seated well. Okay, and then we just need to clean up the silicone. Get all the excess out of here. So we don't just smear it everywhere. Okay, and then we'll reinstall this just by screwing it in. And before we try this, we need to make sure that silicone cures, but we can go ahead and test the drain. So close, open, there we go, it works. Okay, and now we have a completely new look to our shower tub combo. Everything from the shower arm to the tub stop in the tub is completely changed and is now this antique bronze look which I think looks really great, a lot better than the Chromebook that we had before. If you're interested in any of the products that we use in this video, we're going to have links in the description below that you can go and use to check out those products, as well as the tools that we use to complete this project. All right, again, hopefully you liked this video. If you did, please like this video, subscribe to Top Homeowner if you haven't already, and leave us a comment if there's anything that you'd like to see in future videos or if you have any questions about what we did here. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one.